I'm Jeannie Nero with Project Kaleidoscope and I'm pleased to be here with Adriana Kazar from the School of Education at the University of Southern California. Adriana is um, part of the Project Kaleidoscope Keck Facilitating Interdisciplinary Learning Initiative and um, I'm going to explore with Adriana some questions about leadership in the process of meaningful change and um, are there things that really stand out for you, pieces that have to be in place for any kind of change to take place? Absolutely, that's a really good question. Um, I think I want to start with uh, the issue of leadership itself. Um, every study that I've done of change has demonstrated that it, the significant and important role of leaders, they're central. Without them, change doesn't happen. And what we mean by leaders um, is people both at the bottom of the organization, the middle of the organization, and the top of the organization. Leaders can be anyone, and we need all different types of leaders. Um, they lead slightly differently, so someone at the bottom might be a staff member or a faculty member, maybe a new assistant faculty member, and they contribute just as much as, say, the president or the provost of the institution to overall change. We, we know that change happens when we work together in a shared fashion, and it happens more deeply and more quickly. So. The, the key role of everyone, of everyone seeing their role in, in leadership and not waiting for some one provost or president to tell them uh, what to do or that, they, or, or that change is necessary. So we all have ideas about change and contribute to change. In terms of how do we make change happen then, um, uh, we do have to think about where you know where we are uh, as a leader, and uh, we have different roles. So uh, the bottom-up leaders can be those people who, um, you know, they they foster visions that are tied and grounded, especially for interdisciplinarity, to the teaching and learning mission. They're the ones who understand the students and the learning objectives, and can have visions that really tie into the classroom. So you need those kinds of leaders to spend the time to really understand what they're trying to accomplish and have have a vision for teaching and learning that they try to bring out to the other faculty that they work with, um, department chairs, heads of divisions, that they're so close to those students and the learning outcomes that they're going to have really powerful and strong visions that they need to bring forward. And then you need to uh, be the person who has that contagious excitement that gets other people involved, that, that tells people about why you think these kinds of learning goals or uh, this type of uh, teaching and learning is really important and that you're having conversations, you're leading conversations, you're getting people around a brown bag lunch to talk about this kind of exciting um, teaching and learning that you're doing. So it's leading conversations, it's helping to create the visions and then helping to create the networks of people who are going to take this off the ground and implement it, which can take uh, many, many different strategies. But it's, it is understanding one of the things is politics. Change is political. You have to understand um, that there will be turf battles. There will be people who are resistant. And um, being a good political leader, you're the kind of person who will anticipate those uh, challenges um, to uh, what you're trying to change. And instead of letting those become barriers, you anticipate them and then you can overcome those kinds of challenges that often come up to change. One of the things I've um, noticed and also read in your work is the power of culture. Mm -hmm. And from our conversations um, during this workshop and in other Project Kaleidoscope conversations, um, you hear on one side our culture doesn't support people who take mm -hmm. risks and think outside of the box and the other where the dean encourages faculty right. to think outside of the box. Can you comment a little bit on the role of culture? Sure. Um, we all will come from very different kinds of institutional cultures. Some that um, we may be in a, a, a small, a smaller campus environment that provides, you know, people are more collegial, more collaborative, and that may facilitate uh, interdisciplinary work. And you can you can capitalize on those things. You can understand that about your institutional culture and use that as a lever for change. Being cognizant and aware of your culture, you may be aware that you're in a culture that um, is very uh, heavily based in the disciplines. And knowing that about your culture, you can also say, well, how do I support deep disciplinary work at the same time as I talk about interdisciplinarity? But I'm, I'm always aware as a change agent, as somebody who's a leader of my culture, because that's 
uh, going to make me as successful as I will be based on assessing that culture and changing my strategies based on that. So that's why I gave you those two examples of how I can shift the way I'm attempting to go about change based on learning about understanding my culture. So before I move forward, I really want to do that assessment of my institutional culture. Briefly said then, something like a SWOT analysis then, both of them, one's personal, one's department, and one's institution? Yeah, you can uh, do a SWOT analysis for two reasons. One, because it can help you understand your institutional culture if done with a sensitivity to uh, the distinctive strengths and weaknesses of your institution and the threats and opportunities that you face. You can also use, though, a SWOT analysis, not just to, as an insti uh, a place to assess the institutional culture, but to figure out, again, the strategies. Because uh, based on some of the strengths that we have, those are opportunities and levers for me as a change agent to move forward. Knowing about some of our weaknesses, some of the threats to our institution, those are areas that I want to, again, those are sort of the politics, again, tie into areas that I need to be wary about. So the SWOT analysis helps you both to understand the politics of the institution, the culture, and uh, the landscape that you're going to move forward in. Looking for the low-hanging fruit to move ahead. Absolutely. And achieve successes so others will try to get on the bandwagon. Right. You know, building off your strengths, there's nothing better than that that makes it a lot easier rather than trying to start from, uh, if you've had a, a long-term difficult time trying to create a, 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 you know, a facility or a science center and you've had three battles over that already, that's probably not the place to start. But if you already have some people excited about changing the curriculum, there's a ready place to go. Mm -hmm. One of the wonderful things in my work in Project Kaleidoscope over the past few years is to watch the identifying and nurturing of leaders in a leadership culture on campuses. Can you talk a little bit about fostering the next generation of leaders for academe? You know, it's really important um, to recognize that, uh, you know, faculty are not trained in, in leadership and so they often are resistant even to the term leadership. I found that. Even though I found tremendous people who act as leaders, they're often resistant to that term which is interesting. But they, they have those qualities of a leader and they just need to recognize them in themselves. They have good communication skills. They can be clear and articulate things for, for others. They're consensus building. They're able to listen to various people and pull out and synthesize important information that people are bringing to a group and kind of they're able to build a team, build collaboration. Um, they're good listeners. They're people who, again, they're able to foster that teamwork and collaboration because they listen to others very deeply. Um, you know, they're uh, you know discerning and able to make quick judgments to move forward. They're able to be the people who are strategic and do those SWOT analysis. Um, you know, they're they're also individuals who can be inspiring. Who, um, and, and I know that's scary to some people because lots of academics don't like to see themselves as inspiring. They may see themselves as good communicators because they do that as teaching, but you know. You know, as they have uh, enthusiasm for a particular topic, and usually when you take leadership, you've got enthusiasm. They'll see that they can be inspiring and charismatic, and there are lots of other qualities. But I think the important message is that faculty play a critical leadership role. They they need to see themselves more as leaders, and they have those underlying qualities. They just need to be fostered and developed more.